Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pavel Havlíček and I represent the Czech Association for International Affairs, which is a Prague-based think tank specializing in mostly foreign policy related topics uh, and issues, but also working on uh, issues of strategic communication, uh, disinformation and Russian propaganda. Uh, here uh, today I will uh, I will try to speak about uh, the European um, Action Plan for Democracy, which is a new initiative that was just uh, presented yesterday by the Czech Euro Commission Viera Jourova, who um, uh, presented uh, this complex set of measures that the EU is proposing to restore democracy in uh, Europe. Um, I will try to uh, answer, approach that and answer uh, four major questions that we should be having. What the action plan actually is, uh, what, uh, why does it matter, what should we make out of that and where to go next with this. So if to start with the first question, um, <clears throat> I would like to uh, start by outlining that uh, this uh, um, action plan for democracy, shortly EDAP, is uh, a complex set of proposals, a strategic vision from the Euro side of the European Commission, how to restore a democracy in Europe. It is uh, The Commission is looking at the problem from uh, three major uh, perspectives. It, uh, the, the action plan has three major components, which is uh, first uh, dealing with the issues of uh, elections and electoral processes. Secondly, it is um, uh, tackling the issue of uh, media, media landscape, uh, shrinking space for media, pressure on media and so on. Uh, and finally, it is also trying to face uh, the enormous challenge of disinformation um, in uh, a, a, a rather innovative and interesting way. Um, so if we jump into the second question, why does it matter? Um, this is this is why uh, this is uh, you know I would say that this is because um, this is uh, one big opportunity for us who believe in li liberal democracy, who believe that um, there should be a strong and democratic plural. A public space in the EU that uh, uh, journalism is in retreat and we should be doing something about this. Uh, this is also for all of those who believe in free and fair elections and finally who believe that uh, disinformation is a real issue, is a real problem that is manipulating with uh, public opinion and that we should be doing something in uh, with this, especially in the digital realm, especially in the issue of uh, uh, social media platforms and um, election uh, interference and interference in uh, domestic processes in general. So, so this is this is why. Uh, what should we uh, make out of this? And here I will go in, in a little bit of detail. Um, is is also a, a rather a complex question. Um, this is uh, basically. Um, uh, I will be looking uh, in particular into the area of uh, disinformation, but uh, we, we, we can be also discussing more into uh, what, why does it matter and, um, and so on uh, in, in, in terms of elections and uh, media too. So first of all, you know, when it comes to disinformation, I believe that um, the action plan for democracy is a rather innovative and interesting way how to move uh, on with this uh, rather challenging topic. Uh, it is having several layers of the problem, which is first of all, the external dimension, the dimension of external interference, foreign interference in uh, domestic uh, electoral processes, but also in um, uh, information spheres that we have in the EU. Uh, it is uh, the the action plan is clearly using uh, very strong language on uh, you know uh, on who these actors actually are. Uh, it is uh, publicly uh, exposing Russia and China that have uh, engaged in disinformation operations and uh, use them against the EU and the Western community in general. Um, it is uh, the action plan is also proposing to increase the costs of uh, such operations um, when having um, when having. A potentially a new sanction mechanism against these actors uh, for uh, in engaging in uh, uh, complex and uh, severe information operations against uh, the EU. Um, uh, on the domestic level here uh, there are also some new uh, elements uh, to the whole debate. Um, 
it is first of all uh, uh, European Commission's decision to uh, move on uh, with uh, the regulation of uh, social media platforms which uh, uh, failed to deliver uh, in the past when uh, the EU agreed with uh, some of the major uh, platforms uh, including Facebook, Twitter, Google and others uh, to uh, to commit to a voluntary set of measures in the so-called um, uh, code of uh, practice on disinformation which uh, the, the platforms actually subscribe to and uh, agreed to deliver on those commitments in, fi in five pillars but uh, this, uh, as we have ourselves monitored in the case of Czech Republic, uh, failed to materialize and uh, the Commission needs to have much more uh, robust approach to this. It needs to turn the table and uh, uh, push certain things on the platforms to deliver. We need to be defining some of the fundamental uh, principles uh, and we also uh, should be uh, kind of... Uh, uh, exposing the, the potential weaknesses of uh, such approach. So this is why the Commission called for uh, moving uh, uh, with the uh, so-called uh, principle of uh, co-regulation which, in which um, the uh, European Commission and the EU in general will have uh, much stronger powers to, to actually do something about these issues. Um, there will be uh, there is a new um, kind of push to look into the issue of micro-targeting, digital uh, transparency, uh, issue of digital political advertising, you know, and how this can be further regulated uh, to limit the space for uh, election manipulations and so on and so forth. So these are some of the new elements. Um, well, if to briefly speak about also the issue of elections and uh, media, in the sphere of media, the Commission is proposing much stronger and robust approach to supporting independent journalism, both financially but also in terms of uh, kind of uh, capacity in in uh, ex like uh, extending the space for independent media. Um, it is also proposing to to have a look uh, at the transparency of media ownership uh, and so on and so forth. So there are some interesting uh, initiatives and ideas as well, including uh, most significantly on protection of uh, journalism, um, also against the uh, legal trials and litigations in the so-called anti-slap uh, legislation that the Commission will be proposing. In in the future. Uh, finally, on the issue of um, elections and electoral processes, indeed, uh, here the competences of the European Commission are rather limited. That's why uh, the Commission has decided to cooperate quite uh, strongly with the EU member states, uh, but also with um, uh, civil society, with uh, academia, also with um, uh, journalist, uh, journalists and uh, media community. Uh, also, this is, this is the case for the other elements as well. Um, and so here, uh, the uh, European Commission it will be looking into how uh, the uh, European political parties are regulated, how, uh, how they are fin financed, and also uh, how uh, these issues, including uh, from the perspective of uh, digital political advertising are actually now being regulated and there will be uh, a stronger push for doing more together uh, so so these are these are uh, this is the answer to the third question and finally I will be looking uh, into uh, uh, where should we go next what should we be doing and presenting some of the proposals uh, for, so from our side uh, we have seen some uh, rather uh, weak language uh, weak language on uh, what concretely should be done about the digital political advertising. Uh, it is not quite clear how uh, the political component will be defined. This is uh, still to be uh, to be seen in the next year when uh, the Commission pr uh, promised to, uh, to present more initiatives in this area. Uh, also, uh, it is not quite yet clear how uh, the European ex uh, 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 Action Plan for Democracy will be interacting with the, another legislative set of proposals under the umbrella of Digital Services Act, which should be complementary from each other uh, to each other, and uh, the DSA, so-called DSA, uh, should be a more horizontal legislation, which will be regulating both. Um, mm, uh, so-called harmful content and illegal content, so also issues of um, uh, uh, child pornography, uh, terrorism, and so on and so forth. So, so this will be this will be also hidden uh, under the DSA, including uh, more uh, more to be 
seen on the issues of um, online advertising. Uh, finally, what we are uh, considering as uh, a missing component is, uh, or rather weak component, is the issue of a civic space, um, um, a situation of civil society, which has been recognized in general as a partner to the European Commission and EU in general in uh, pushing for these issues and implementing them in practice. Uh, also when it comes to delivering concrete ideas, but at the same time, its own situation is not really uh, clear when it comes to uh, both funding and uh, s support from the EU uh, to a civil society, but also when it comes to civic participation, um, enga engaging in participatory democracy, and so on and so forth. But also, similarly to uh, the issue of journalism, uh, when it comes to pressuring civil society and uh, uh, protection uh, of civil society against also, for example, uh, pressure from the EU member states, but also third parties. So, so finally, I will conclude uh, just by saying that um, the EU uh, uh, action plan for democracy is one big opportunity. It really depends on us how we uh, what we make out of that um, and how ambitious we want to be, also from the Czech perspective, but also from perspective of uh, civil society. Mm, and uh, I believe that this is the right step forward in the debate, which will be ongoing. It will take time, but um, it, it, it might be promising in increasing the resilience of the EU, uh, in closing some of the loopholes that we still have both vis-a-vis uh, -vis the foreign interference, but also when it comes to, when it comes to the domestic manipulation and uh, disinformation uh, debate that we are having in our own uh, union. Thank you so much and I will be looking forward to discussing with you uh, tomorrow.